Today I am here to share with you all an exciting and rather an interesting story of network transformation from the Middle East. And I believe uh, this will be something meaningful for the operators who are uh, pursuing an anticipating but yet gnarly journey to the network transformation. And similarly, an add-on to understand a different perspective from a market that is assured by the uh, litany of the multi-vendor and so many open source solutions. So let's start. <coughs> In my today's session, I will be primarily speaking about uh, four main points. Uh, first is uh, learning from our experience and what are the most important challenges confronting us uh, as of now. And then we will see the most optimum solutions to address those challenges. Then as we see in the yesterday session, we learn about 5G, how we can use 5G and Edge as a catalyst to support this network transformation. And finally, analysis about the how factor about the management, because this is very important with orchestration about the edge management, massive scalability, how we can manage it and we can evolve towards the DevOps. So um, as we are approaching towards networks of 2020, that can support wide use cases. And uh, we already have some early experience with the NFV. We find that still there are some open questions that require uh, futuristic uh, answers. As an example, uh, we uh, need to see, for example, the performance of the NFV and software-defined networks at scale. Can we host millions of subscribers of data and migrate terabits of traffic? If so, what is the most optimum migration part to ensure the customer experience? With this huge capacities comes the questions about the positive TCO or the dollarization of the technology. I think this is some area where we, uh, as an industry, still not uh, well addressed, and we just try to be innovative in the last years to just make sure technology is working. This is another area. And then with uh, the telcos rolling out a lot of networks, clouds, they have IT clouds, telco clouds, edge clouds, central clouds, regional clouds how we can really become a platform player, something which we, I think, learn from the web scale providers. And an important one about the supply chain and the locking of the network for the niche players. Still, we believe that, uh, uh, except for a big uh, few names in the telco, the uh, network still is not open for the niche players or startups. That is another area that we really need to explore to fully capitalize this journey. And then it, about the vendor agnostic testing and open source based operation model. So uh, let's move forward. Uh, we firmly believe that the future of the uh, CSPs is more about the platforms and less about the applications. Primarily we see a um, uh, maturity level of the applications. Already we are at threshold point. We can see in yesterday's session about TM forum APIs. We see open API 3.0, similarly we see the application support portability, uh, almost the understanding is reaching where we can see that uh, we really want an application that can move across the platforms. To support this vision, there are um, uh, some key principles like uh, key imperatives which can define us to become a really open source telecom, right? And these are what is uh, our understanding is about the NFV, STN, like the platforms, what we know. Then we need to especially focus on the vendor agnostic testing across telco, IT, all the workloads. Then about the uh, di digital OSS and the service orchestration to, re to offer the services to the customers in an agile manner and operations, obviously the agile operations, self-learning, all this type of stuff. To start with, this uh, is a simple slide, but an important one because we are talking since the last two days, what about the tier two operator, tier three? Um, I think there are different approaches adopted by different carriers and the prime selection criteria depends. Fast time to the market and easy for us, or we can have a more innovative approach, building a multi-vendor full stack. And for example, a CSP select, just define a reference architectures in terms of hardware or cloud flavors and procure solution from many vendors. Or we just build one platform and bringing all the applications on it. In uh, the multi-vendor full stack, we expect a complete each layer separate vendor with complete orchestration and NFV. This is an important because uh, uh, we see that for the future management of the virtual networks, NFVO is mandatory. 
And for the SDN, without SDN, we cannot automate it. And similarly, the, all the innovative use cases about uh, network slicing and uh, uh, service chaining, this all depends on SDN. So what we believe is that building the full stack, multi-vendor full stack is the right approach, but the transformation journey we should divide in two phases. Uh, first, we should focus more on the API standardization, automation, and how we will manage it. And then we will follow an uh, era of maturity where we can support some new innovation and migration. Like, uh, so this is uh, the points. When we see about SDN, uh, actually this is my personal uh, thinking that everything which is a programmable way, we try to name it in a SDN way. And we, uh, uh, we have re uh, obviously seen success in the SDN in the enterprise market. But when we apply the same principles in the telco, in the NFV, we still uh, find some challenges. And principally, these are not the challenges of SDN, but we find due to the telco requirements, SLAs, HA, we still find a lot of issues tweaking around the SDN to make it work in the data center. Uh, as an example, the first is, uh, I think, is simple but important one because we simply have no choice to roll out a network without SDN and later evolve because there is simply uh, redesign or redeployment. So we uh, don't have this option. Then about the third party integration. For this, we have a lot of discussion within the industry with our partners. And we find that uh, uh, still the uh, understanding of the SDN vendors around the IFA 5.6 on the integration is there, but it's weak. By weak, it means that we have a situation where we need to integrate the NFU to the SDN di uh, directly, which means we, it's very difficult to automate the data center, right? And we, uh, as we see on the uh, left slide, we want to promote an idea of integration through the plugin, which is a standard design, but still we need to see about the carrier grade and this stuff. About the uh, scaling and load balancing, these are, I think, the basic principles in the cloud, but when we implement in the NFV, we find on the infrastructure level is no issue, but we as a telco provider more focus on service. So for example, we need to introduce dedicated load balancer. We cannot rely on the OpenStack HA proxy or the SDN and uh, vendors actually come up with some out of box solutions to address this. And same is the case um, for the scaling because scaling, what is my definition of scaling is very simple is addressing the service level, right? The customer traffic, not just the scale out some VMs. On top of that, we can clearly see about uh, solution unification. Uh, one SDN that can manage the SROV, OVS, TPDK workloads in the same manner. It's simply not there. So they are managing V routers and maybe not managing the SROV nodes. And the last one, an important one, we find impact of uh, on operation in SDN. Like when an issue is coming, it's scaling the whole data center and it's difficult to manage. And in fact, till now we find with SDN in the NFV environment, the automation is still an area that needs to be well addressed. So uh, with this multi-vendor, obviously the first question that comes on in all of your minds, okay, if we bring a lot of things, application portability, how to test it? In my definition, making KPIs and SLAs, we find that still it's a complex process on the left hand side, you will see that uh, uh, um, still the onboarding is a manual process, bringing a lot of vendors on ground, uh, solving issues around the HC APIs, common understanding between different vendors. And where the real problem is lies is because the common NFVI requirements for VNFs is simply not there. And what is the target or what is the acceptance criteria is the VNF KPI, which is dictated by a VNF vendor. So obviously, when with more and more VNFs coming on the platforms, the idea just not flies off, right? And then we find with the same VNFs coming on the platform, but we just select change the vendor and we find is a different experience. The requirements are different. And uh, there is no clear demarcation. And uh, on top of this, we can see um, uh, within the industrial community, yes, Linux Foundation, we see some CVC and compliance verification working to define APIs, but still it is not on ground yet. And uh, the modeling is another challenge for this we are actually discussing uh, with the guys because we see that uh, <clears throat> the current Tosca simple profile for NFV is too abstract and it must be supplemented like promote VNF must support heat templates and support cloud type of automation. This somehow seems 
definite direction to go. And then the reliance on the many, many open source tools. So we have seen vendors coming, they are hardening this open source in their way, and it becomes a question with so many multi-vendors. About the targets, I think it's very clear about, the first is about the template standardization, and it's very clear that Tosca alone is not gonna work, and we really are looking to see, promote the heat templates as a start with, and uh, then we see even in the ITSI, they are defining something on the TST06 about DevOps, test-specific language, how it should look like an agreement between different vendors. The other key point is demarcation. As of now, still for the testing point, we don't find a clear demarcation. We want different vendors in different layers coming, complete this testing, ensuring API upstream and go. Because uh, uh, right now, the acceptance is only through the end-to-end -end KPI from VNF. And uh, we really don't are sure if a change in the layer, one layer below, what is the impact, except the VNF level testing. In fact, the KPI in SLA, this is the mandatory requirements for the commercialization. Maybe it's not a um, very strict requirement for the service, uh, like uh, just onboard it, but for the commercialization, every time in the life cycle you manage, uh, do upgrades, make changes, that is very prevalent, and that's we really need to look forward. <coughs> this is an important, I have seen a lot of summits, people talking about technology, but without the dollarization of the technology, it becomes a very, I mean, very hard to really, you know, do the massive scalability. For the transformation, we find right now there are two main key points. The first is the investment on the virtualized or this innovative NFV SDN is still more compared to the procuring same capacity in the PNF. And the other thing is the PSI. We all know PSI is a Masia, is some special thing coming, solving over issues. But the fact is, due to PSI and its complex responsibility in SLAs, the, it, is a, it is a bottleneck for the Nishi players. And um, uh, what we see as the most important challenges, the first is we really want to enforce the ITSI uh, license GRE EV0 one zero for the VNF and NFVI. In other words, we want VNFs to comply with the cloud type principles of licensing. That is very important to start what with. Sorry? MV is multi-vendor. Multi yep. Okay. Then the other main key point is about the investment on the NFVI. We saw a lot of hardware accelerations and tweaking around the hardware still. We are far from our target for the NFVI investments. VNF licensing simply is following legacy, so they are not uh, re-licensing as per cloud principles, what you call multi-tenancy, scaling, and pay as you grow. VNF service, yes, we talk about orchestration, automation, but when we talk to the VNF service, it's still not leveraging the advantages from this. And NFVU and Assurance still its licensing model is not matching with the use case approach that can really, for example, uh, it's based on the virtualized resource, VM or physical resource. On STN, um, I think the main problem is still we are relying on the physical infrastructure. The introduction of open hardware will solve because we increase controller and a lot of these layers, but uh, simply it is costing us more. So that is an important area. At least we have a discussion with NetGrounds guidelines yesterday to understand like uh, how it will be to really virtualize the Tor layer, and can we do it in a commercial network, right? And uh, the licensing sharing across the NFVI POPs is definite there. And the most important in all of this umbrella is the PSI, scope and costing. We find that PSI is there, but it's very hard in a multi-vendor to match the scope and the uh, tools and uh, services, which requires more and more investment from the carrier. So this is definitely one area that we need a colossal approach for this, right? <clears throat> uh, let's try to understand uh, what we want to achieve first, right? What is our target is very clear. We want to build a platform that in an ideal case can uh, host all the VNFs and maybe IT, telco. We are analyzing a lot of applications to reach to this VN, but uh, uh, Frankly speaking, this journey is not a smooth ride and we find a lot of issues and uh, I will just try to sum up uh, into in these four main directions. <clears throat> the first problem is the NFVI resource allocation and we can clearly see that uh, because we are relying on the VNF to tell, okay, what is your requirement? And this 
fat or oversized VNFs give us extra requirements, even they are not matched with over NFVI, which means 20% appropriate traffic uh, capacity we just lose. The other thing is the VNF maturity in terms of service offload or hardware offload. We are compromising, and I, I give, just give you one example that, for example, if we provide an NFVI of 100 gig, on average, the VNF can only use 20 gig, which means is a lot of compromise, and really this is an area we need to fix. Otherwise, we will land up in a platform just 20, 30% utilization. And uh, other uh, thing, obviously, is the use of many architectures. We know SROV and pass-through and DP, these all are realities. But at least their O&M needs to be unified. Otherwise, it's very difficult to manage in a commercial network. And uh, about acceleration, we want to focus more on SDS because for hardware, we even see Etsy has done a lot of work on the specs on the hardware acceleration, but the software acceleration on the storage, we find a lot of issues about the um, issues about, for example, its performance as well as on the reliability. You know, it's not the same as the IPSAN. That benchmarking is also important. This slide, I think, is self-explanatory, but what how we should approach to solve it. I think the direction is clear. We build a platform following some standard principles and VNF should fit into it, right? But we still find the VNFs are not matching the cloud principles. So we should be very strict in the uh, VNF selection criteria and find a way to challenge them, right? For example, we still see um, the, they lack the horizontal scaling, right? This is very common for the high throughput workloads like BNG, like EPCs. Similarly, they are simply oversized, right? We, we think that actually their requirement is maybe 10 cores and they are asking 20 just to ensure their KPIs, which ultimately is hitting us hard, right? And then the, uh, they are not following the cloud, cloud principles, like a very simple example is pay as you grow model. Another is the multi-tenancy and the elasticity, you know, coupled with licensing. They, they, I mean, still the principles of deployment are following the same as in the legacy. And then the dependence on the ephemeral workloads not supporting the vision of central storage. Self-healing is still, you know, it's, I, I will say it's a lethargic. It means that it is not allowing us to extend the VNF across DCs, you know, and you have to roll out or spin the whole VNF. And then the networking requirements, still we are following VLAN or some provided networks. This is still not normalized. And we want to follow the web scales, to be very frank, you know, how they are spinning the workloads, how they are managing the networks. You know, for us, this takes a lot of time. It's not automated, and it's every VNF comes with its own set of unique requirements. And maybe vendor is uh, have be good in the legacy using its VNF like this, and he want to just bring the same idea in the cloud, which simply I think cannot fly, right? And the VNF portability across the multiple data centers, that with, especially with the multi-VIM, that is an idea which still we don't see uh, flying. And um, other direction is obviously to focus it from the NFVI side. The first three is more about the um, uh, I mean the consolidation of the requirements. We should understand, okay, what is a platform? Actually, there is nothing like platform. You should be very clearly analyze the applications and its requirements to come up what is the most optimum definition of a platform. For the first three, we can see like uh, what should be the right mix of this RAM and NICs and disks and everything. We have a discussion with ARM yesterday, how they are fits, what is, what is the hardware or ex capabilities they can offer in the NFV? So this is very important analysis. In the next slide, I will just give a uh, summary to start with. And then about the, um, uh, for example, the selection of the storage capacity versus performance, unification of architecture, address the SDS scalability and reliability issues. Again, the VIM scaling, because we promote an idea of one VIM across one DC, but we find a lot of limitations, issues with the open stack the scalability in the MariaDB bus architecture, and then the VNF benchmarking, and about hardware acceleration. So these are the key areas of focus to really solve the issues on the infrastructure. In this, I just want to give a summary that uh, we hope to divide the whole uh, network, like for telco, around two type of compute models, and one for the IT, 
But on top of that, I just want to say there are some VNFs after a lot of analysis, we find they are just not makes a business sense to virtualize because, uh, you know, for example, we are uh, investing um, maybe $10 on the PNF, so we have to invest $80 if we have to virtualize. So that is an area that still we need to explore further to see how to make the best definition of platform to serve those applications. About acceleration, um, there are many, many ideas, and uh, some are vendor proprietary, but still we see that uh, till the now industry is mature for the hardware independent acceleration. SmartNIC is going to be the first reality, but we find some clear challenges in SmartNICs, and these are mainly focusing around the power consumption cost metrics, and they are supporting the migration, live migration, this type of features. Uh, we um, uh, think the other innovative ideas on the hardware acceleration like system on chip and FPGAs, GPUs, they are innovative, but still we need to more clear use cases in the telco to explore them and make a business case out of them, right? So um, next, uh, I will be talking about something about the 5G. Yes, what is a 5G? We all know 5G it will solve is some miracle that will solve some ultimate issue and will take us to the future, right? And I think this is why we see a lot of deployments and premature deployments, I say, everybody just rush and want to see, yes, I roll out 5G, I am 5G. But uh, we see that still 5G uh, is a glorified Wi-Fi, right? It can build a huge speed, 10 gig uh, to the end user. So we really need to see how it can help us to become a digital service provider. and. Uh, in this slide, you can see clearly that some things we have achieved, right? C-band and we have seen millimeter wave. But still there are some questions, right? What is the definition of the remote cloud, SDN and networking with massive sites, right? And then we have about the applications, how we can build a collaborative and not a competitive approach with the OTTs and third party developer, local developer, content provider. And about the digital OSS, how we will offer it, we all know, you know, slicing and this and that. But again, slicing, this type we have to see from the platform perspective, how orchestration will uh, support us and we can achieve this. So these are some domains that really need a very clear definitions to make 5G as a real disruptive for us. And this, in this slide, we're just uh, trying to focus. I think it's very uh, common. We are seeing some 5G release 5 and release 6 evolution standards. And at least in the Middle East, we see the early killer applications are coming in the form of uh, FWA, video, and AR. For IoT, still, we think most of the use case requirements that can be fulfilled by the LTM and Advanced Pro. And, but the most important of all, as you can see, the Mac, Mac and the Cloud Rand, these are most important to support this 5G disruption journey. Without investing or going in this direction, certainly is a block mind. For example, if there is no Cloud Rand, right, it means this will be on this capacity with huge IoT and this coming. I mean, it will be very difficult to manage. And similarly, for the front hall, this type of things we really need to match together. If ever we have to, change 5G evolution to the revolution and real disruption for us, right? <clears throat> uh, next we can uh, understand about the edge. Uh, edge actually, I think everybody has its own understanding. This is the same way I think we all started for the NFV. And in the recent times, believe me, I the most appropriate definition of edge I uh, listened is from Thomas Kuria, is the Google Cloud Chief, and when they were explaining about their Anthos platform, uh, in the Google Connect, and what we understand, um, an edge, the application is from third party. It's not from the main vendor, it's a developer. And a local provider, maybe he even don't know what is ITC and what is API and you know, a lot of this telco stuff. So we should first set the principle, and this principle, we should bring any application provider, any IT guy coming in, doing something for us. So that vision is very important. And we are still at an early phase to doing POC, but what is our understanding? There are five key characteristics to reach it. Uh, this is, I think, very clear for 5G local breakout in Mac. Everybody knows, you know, we have been working in defining some white papers on enterprise, understanding their requirements. This is very clear, right? With a lot of edge sites, like hundreds and thousands, the zero touch becomes mandatory. It's no longer an option how to do ONM of this. And 
about infrastructure is very clear. Operator will not roll out the infrastructure in all sites. We will rely on our partners. If AWS is there, we will catch them. Google is there, maybe IT company is there. We will rely on their infrastructure to host the applications. And the last two is very important. First is we want to make the developer feel just following the GitHub style or the Swagger style to develop and a pass platform to test it so that he really don't need to worry what is the underlying network. So that is a most appropriate uh, thing to start with to build a platform. Yes, we want to start with a use case, but unless these principles are not addressed, I think uh, this no use case will really fly in the 5G and the post era. Uh, about the orchestration, um, I just want to share, we have learned a lot of things about OSM, but I think it's an industry level nirvana because every operator and vendor see he is doing it, he wants to do it, but we still find a disagreement on the optimum way to do it. We hear a lot of things, orchestration of orchestration and edge orchestration and some very special orchestration, but to roll out this actually, based what, what, how we understand, first we need to define the principle. Actually, there are two key principles that you must understand and that the first and top one is the abstraction. Whatever we do on the orchestration, it should not be something that is tied to the physical infrastructure. And the other thing about modeling, because to be very frank, right, there are a lot of issues in modeling. We find the vendors don't expose their meta models, and we find the Tosca is too abstract, is a cloud style, is not matching telco. And we really want to see, for example, this magic box of information model, how it can really address this part without making a significant changes in the VNF design or uh, making vendors expose their internal VNF structure, you know, across, I mean. So uh, we see that uh, there are uh, five main principles and only one is what is being implemented right now in a pure fashion. For example, NFVO must be modular, not a complete product from a single vendor. That is very important if we have to scale out this layer, you know, covering a lot of use cases. Simple to design, it's simply not there. We find vendor coming with a lot of tools and say, you know, we are very agile, use this tool, use that tool, but still it's not flexible enough to automate in a programmable way. About the open source, yes, we see a lot of activity in OSM and ONAP, but the vendor roadmaps are not aligned. So we really not see this vision clearly matching. So we think it's a proprietary NFVO solution which is being disguised, disguised in, the, you know, in some community flavor, I don't know. Intelligent automation, here I focus more on day two. We are on day one, yes, we know how to um, define the VNFDs, templates, deploy them, but what about the day two and the horizontal and maybe configuration automation? That is another very important area. So we, I think this is something we have achieved today, over the day one, onboarding, some simple use case of monitoring and stuff like that. And uh, this slide I will just try to zip here, just wanted to show because yesterday we have a big session. I just want to address on this domain. You see this guy, NAS Gateway. Yes, we remove the abstraction from this TM Forum API from top to down, but still we think this translation from the API layer to the network layer, this is a gray area because frankly speaking, we don't find a very clear modeling on the orchestration or some guy take the responsibility how we can quickly bring the digital product to the network online, you know, in a very programmable way, easy to change way, you know, something like that. And uh, about challenges, um, uh, th this I just want to share something, you know, I think is the same type of challenge we address, find in platform, right? We start from VNF requirements. VNF give a lot of requirements. We say, okay, you know, the, okay, this thing, like that. Same is the case with VNFO, uh, NFVO. For example, uh, uh, we select a number of VNFs and uh, uh, NFVO vendor we select and we come to know that this NFVO vendor will only work with these VNFs or at least they prefer to work with those VMs or VNFs on STN. So we really want to get rid of it, you know. So, but uh, again, this issue of information modeling and abstraction, that, that still we need to see. How we completely decouple, I select NFVO, it can work across with any application. And uh, what are the key challenges to see? Uh, first, we all agree on this, hide the network uh, service from the uh, physical, right? Separate all sort of monitoring solutions 
and build a solution from multi vendors, not take the full stack from a single vendor, right? And distrib distributed clouds and Mac and massive scaling is very, very important to really see whether this architecture can do this on the remote sites. And uh, multi vendor and multi component, that is the key to see. We want to just uh, really solve this issue and focus on the business uh, use cases like end to end provisioning, Volti, like uh, uh, cross country VP VPN, this type of use cases. And finally, we think the synergy of telco and IT lies here because we really want to understand the two directions like how as a cloud, uh, Cloudify is taking this and the rift on the network is taking it and how we can actually leverage to have a common this layer for the telco and IT workloads, right? And um, uh, I think I'm just uh, out of time, but uh, let's be quick. About end-to-end -end orchestration, I just want to address the south side because I think we have talked a lot on the north side I think the, for the end-to-end, -end so especially, the most value, if you see uh, here, is lying on the edge. We want to see, really want to see that uh, this end-to-end -end SO and this with PNF and lot of uh, networks and domain controllers coming, how it will reach and solve the edge issues, right? And for this, we still fi find a lot of myriad of standards. This is maybe my own understanding, uh, I will not say, but comparing with different uh, standard bodies, we find everyone has some advantage and some bottleneck somewhere. ITSI, we all know, we start as a carrier with ITSI APIs, ITSI lot of things. It's very good in the central DC, but with developer API, open APIs, how it will reach the edge? This is still a question and we don't find a clear answer on the ITSI, right? ONAP, uh, we still find its framework is clear for edge, supporting lot of data analysis, analytics, but for an operator with no R&D team, it's simply, you know, it's very difficult to do. And uh, we really want to see uh, how, whether to deploy a Dystro style for the own app or, I mean, this is still an issue and is an industry known issue anyways. For OSM, we agree on this information model and we agree on this PNF and VNF, it can manage. But over understanding on this carrier grade, this is the key. Why? Because of the controller or adopter design. I already shared some experience with some colleagues. We bring an adopter or connector. We simply later on upgrade the below layer and we find the service is a problem, you know. So this type of thing we really need to address across the life cycle, not on the day one. How we will evolve the networks, we do an upgrade, downgrade, then how it will be the impact, right? This is, I think, uh, still needs to well catered and then we have this open stack working on this airship and lot of stuff and about the hybrid clouds in future we have to orchestrate lot of clouds together right this is, and each coming with its own school of thought and ways so we really need to um, see uh, how to really address this uh, what we see the latest move in the industry we see like airship for example is more focusing on the application platform and the Starling X is a fully integrated solution, but it's not supporting the application management in a way. So we need an industry level colossals to have a common direction. About orchestration phases, I will be quick. We think still we need to focus on day two and the configuration automation and to build the complete CI CD pipeline, right, to support this vision. So this is, I mean, the main ideas about the orchestration, how we should really solve the issues moving forward. This I will be quick because DevOps is a fancy word. Everyone wants, yes, I am in doing DevOps. I am a telco guy. I love DevOps. But there is no clear definition. Lately, we have been in touch with ITC. We are doing some wonderful work in release 3, ITC TST006. At least now we have some definition, right? For example, I find a definition of developer and uh, uh, you can say service provider. But it's more about responsibility. Yes. For a big operator, we find lot of vendors, responsibility and management is important, but still for us, the definition of DevOps is a use case driven. And we really see the value coming by elaborating. For example, I think this is very famous, right? Uh, VNF onboarding, SFCs, auto testing is very important. This is an area still unaddressed. For example, in a commercial network, somebody come and tell that, okay, we are going to do the server hardening. So what will be the impact? Every vendor tells us, look, you know, theoretically no impact, but practically you should test. This is an area we really need to foster to see how to do it in an automated way in a commercial deployment. And NAVI benchmarking, we all know this testing is very important if we have to commercialize the service, right? 
and CI/CD pipeline is very common. Network slicing very common. This is very important about root cause analysis because now we see our drive where industry is evolving towards ANI and HC has defined some enhanced network intelligence. So we really want to see this as an early case of the AI to foster orchestration, how we can really correlate and uh, you know, evolve the networks towards this direction. And this I will just, my last slide, just want to explain our understanding of security. Security is an area uh, which is very sensitive and very important. But we uh, think that uh, security challenges in the cloud area is beyond our defined boundary. Because as the telco guys, we always trying to define boundary, define a scope, define normative reference. But simply, we see there is a hybrid clouds, and then there will be um, distributed clouds, and then there will be API used by the developer, and then there will be blockchain and AI coming to interfere. So simply this, we have to really see how, what is a clear definition to demarcate it. And about progress, yes, we see uh, still on the VNF, we following 3GPP, and ITC have some um, standards like we are selecting our security solutions based on SAC 013, but you see the, again the problem what we faced in orchestration. It's IFA modeling is still not mature. Unfortunately, we find the IFA 26 is still not there. And, uh, but what is our target we really want to achieve? That we can, for example, uh, have a security solution that can encompass all platforms. Then we can deliver security testing. For example, a new VNF comes. We should have an automated way to test it, right? And security testing. So, I mean, that uh, is all. And uh, I'm already over time. I just want to ra wrap up. I try to cover a lot of things. And uh, what we, is the most important direction now uh, to see to commercialize the technology, right? We want to really need to see how to commercialize. Everybody is talking about disruption. Let's focus on this. So how do we even find the optimal part to migrate and cost effectiveness, right? It's very important. Infrastructure issues. We talk about platforms. What is the right definition of platform? It's very important to focus on this and standardize it. Dollarization, anyways, will decide where we'll reach. 5G is very important. We see how we can support it for the disruption and orchestration. And finally, about the, I mean, the evolutions toward the DevOps and how we can really become an um, uh, agile service provider. So I think. Uh, that's all. Uh, thank you very much for your patience and listening.